the podcast. <laughs> Is that our intro? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. All right. So, hi. This is Oop Daisy. I'm Ashley, and I am Vanessa. And today we are going to be going over the episode "The Pox Father" for Life with Derek. Yeah. So we totally did not do anything last week. I was just weak. We both were. Um, I'm still weak. <laughs> Same. I just got off work, and I'm just like, meh. Mm. Yeah. But last week, the author who wrote Hockey Girls, she wrote a new fic. She dedicated for, for it to us, me. but more for Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's called On Team Daisy, and it's about. I think it's like a beer league, right? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like a beer league. Um, like it's nothing serious. So, Casey is playing hockey that's all like i want you guys to like read it so i'm not going to spoil too much but casey plays hockey in the fic and you'll understand why she's playing hockey but then another point i really like in the story is that uh derek he's working on the set of degrassi he's not an actor he's kind of like a behind the scene person but i just thought that was really funny do you think she (laughs) do you think she added that because we were like talking about degrassi in a few episodes oh maybe i don't know be sloth. Did you add it? Because- <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny though because uh, what was it like? I was. I mean, reading- if you watch Canadian television, the grassy is inevitable. Oh yeah, like at my work, we had a shirt that had wheels on it. Oh jeez! And then everyone like walked in. And they're like, "Oh my god, it's wheels! Oh my god!" <laughs> and you're like, "I know!" Like everyone knows what the grassy is. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Well, especially in Canada. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I don't think anyone down here would know. They'd just be like, why is Drake in a wheelchair? Drake, wheels got shot. That's why he's in a wheelchair. No, but I'm saying that's what probably Americans would be thinking. I don't know if a lot of them know Degrassi at all. Uh, that's true. But yeah, he was shot in the spinal column. In the spinal column. <laughs> Speaking of Degrassi, isn't uh, what's his face in this episode too? Yes, we'll get to that though. Yeah, okay, we'll get to that. And then you wanted to say something else. Uh oh, yeah. So I don't know if you guys know because we do this on Anchor. I got like a message or whatever on my phone that gives me like news updates on certain things, and it was like, oh, you you go on Anchor, and just so you know. Spotify just bought Anchor, and I'm like, oh, dope. I hope it doesn't change anything, because it's free to use, and I like that. I mean, I think, I don't think it would change. I mean, you can still have, like, upgraded stuff, right? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't like, know. if you wanted to pay for Anchor, you could, and you would get extra stuff, but... Possibly. I think it's more, like, for sponsorships and stuff. Mm. We don't have any of those. <laughs> We're not cool enough. <laughs> I'm f- I'm f- I-, I feel like we could if we really wanted to, but like, uh, we're not cool enough. Be like, and this podcast is sponsored by water. By water? Is yes. that what you just said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's brought to you by Vanessa and Ashley. <laughs> All right. So, moving on to this episode. The Pox Father. So, the summary is, Derek is quarantined at home as he is with the chicken pox and is hiding a secret which Casey intends to find out. George, also, um, has to prevent himself from getting the chicken pox Derek has so that he can do a job presentation. So, this episode starts out with Derek coming into the kitchen and you just see him, like, itching like crazy. And he tells everyone this. And Casey tells him like it's called soap use it gross <laughs> and then lizzie sees him and tells him that maybe it's the chicken pox and uh, but he's like adamant that like only little kids get that and casey again is like you do have the brain of a little kid like she was like <laughs> girl with those, is straight like, up savage slapbacks like <laughs> she's straight up savage mm-hmm. did, did you, you ever have the yeah, chicken pox? I did. did. Did you? No. 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 I got vaccinated. I got vaccinated. Yeah, like I have so many scars because of chicken pox. Eh. Because 
Uh, I have eczema, so I have, like, really itchy skin to start with. So, adding that on top of it, I, like, died as a child. How old are you? Six? I want to say six or seven. And it was absolute death. Like, my arms and stomach are littered with scars from chicken pox. Holy shit. Yeah, it was great. And then they put this, like, my mom would put some cream on me, and it was so cold. Like, <laughs> I would cry. It was so cold. Damn. Yeah, it was brutal. But then my sister got chicken pox from me. So my mom <laughs> was like, excellent, now I don't have to deal with this ever again. Well, that is true, too. Like, mm-hmm. it's best if everyone just gets it at the same time than waiting. Did any of your siblings get it? No, we all got vaccinated. Oh my god! <laughs> we all got vaccinated, Vanessa. I'm, I'm googling this. If you were <laughs> vaccinated for chicken pox, can you get shingles? See, like, even if you have chicken pox, you can get shingles later on in life. See, however, a person who has never had chicken pox or chicken pox vaccine could get chicken pox from someone else with shingles. So, even if you have your vaccine, you could get it possibly. So, if someone you know gets chicken pox, please, get stuck with them in a room. (laughs) Yeah, no. (laughs) This has been a PCA from Vanessa. Derek asked George if he's ever had the chicken pox, and George says he doesn't think so, um, and he hasn't either. So, then he decides to quarantine Derek to his room. But Derek makes a point of needing to go to school the next day, which Casey finds reasonably weird since Derek never wants to go to school. I mean, she's not wrong. No, and she has every right to be suspicious of why he suddenly wants to go to school. Because <laughs> he was like, I go to school tomorrow, right? And, like, that's not Derek at all. <laughs> no, it's not. I think she said something along the lines of, like, he tries to get out of school for, like, a slight cough. Yeah, like, a tickle in his throat, and he's like, I can't go in. <laughs> so, for him to have something like chicken pox and be like, I gotta go to school, is just automatically weird. So, Nora gets confirmation that Derek has the chicken pox, and he'll need to be home for at least five days. And George, again, he's like, oh, I can't miss work. I have a huge presentation. And he's like, I can't get the chicken pox. And Nora's telling him, like, well, you most likely already have it because it's already been in the air and everything. And, you know, it just hasn't manifested yet. Yeah. But he's just like, well, then I just won't be at home. (laughs) I just won't breathe his air. And then he, like, leaves. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's not how it works. It goes to Derek's room, and he's on the phone arguing with this guy named Frank. And because apparently Frank can't be in school this week either because his cousin is getting married in Florida. And Casey is listening outside the door, and Derek starts talking about orders needed to be filled and money will be lost. And already she's getting like really suspicious about what he's doing. So eventually, Casey goes into his room because she wants the phone. And then she notices he has a beeper. The beepers are so ancient. I just can't handle it. Like, oh my god. Like, you still know anyone with a beeper? I don't. I never knew anyone. Like, I know, I think in hospitals and stuff, it's still what they use because it's more reliable than, like, technology today, apparently. Yeah. So, like, they still get paged and shit. But I don't, I don't remember know anyone, anyone having a beeper. I, I mean, either. I knew it was a thing, but I don't. Know, I didn't personally know anyone who had a beeper. Okay, let's be real. Anyone who owns a beeper today is probably like a drug lord. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> even <laughs> even then, it was like either like really wealthy like doctors and lawyers had beepers, or drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> like ridiculous. not the, the average Joe had no reason to really have a beeper, no, not it's, really. It's just so yeah. <laughs> then we go to uh, Emily and Casey in the hallway, and Emily is complaining that she couldn't reach Casey all night because their phone was busy, and she tells Casey that she needs a cell phone. Oh, <laughs> uh, I wonder if Emily has him. a cell phone. Probably, if she's saying you need 
to get one. She probably has one. She's like, you're my friend and you're not cool because you don't have a cell phone. So you need to get one. And then Casey's saying she doesn't have the money for one. And basically, Emily just wanted the call so that she could hear if Derek was fine or not because she heard he was sick. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, she just really wanted to talk to Casey about any. Plus, she lives next door. Yeah, you can literally, like, walk down. Could she not, like, walk to her, like, house, knock on the door, and be like, hey, Casey, like, how how late was it that she was trying to, like, call? I mean, wouldn't it be easier, like, it would be easier just to be like, hey, just call and be like, hey, this is what's happening. I'm gonna come down to your house. And you're like, okay, simple. Well, That's she couldn't simple. call. That was the whole problem. Like, just go over then. <laughs> exactly, but that's just the thing. I'm just saying, like, it'd be so much easier to just walk over, like, what is it, like, 20 feet? And back then- <laughs> in my day, kids and then didn't just- have cell phones. How how old were you when you got your first cell phone? Um, like what grade? Eighth grade. Oh, you're part of the problem. <laughs> I did not get a cell phone until I was in 11th grade. Okay, and but uh, that was maybe a year later than I did. I don't care. I was still older. Anyway, <laughs> I remember what my uh, argument was to having one. Like, 100%. I didn't I have rem- one. My mom was just like, hey, it's cheaper if we all get phones. So Yeah, no, that's not how it rolled in my plan. family. <laughs> I had to, like, put up an argument to why I need one, to which I replied with, what if I'm stranded at a drive-in, branded as a fool? (laughs) What would they say Monday at school? (laughs) And my mom (laughs) lost it. (laughs) Who says Grease doesn't teach you things? (laughs) Yeah, like, Grease is, like, my mom's favorite movie, so she, like, lost (laughs) her mind. She absolutely, like, died. (laughs) That's going to be my head now. <laughs> You're welcome. A fool. Okay. What will they say? <laughs> Monday at school. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. <laughs> I got you. Uh, okay. So, as Emily and Casey are talking in the hallway, some dude from the chess club comes to Casey's locker and gives her this big ass fruit basket to give it to Derek in the hopes that he'll have a speedy recovery. One, why are you giving Derek fruit? I doubt he eats it. It's because he loves him. It's his secret admirer. <laughs> um, it just it just doesn't seem something that Derek would really appreciate. Like, he'd be like, oh, that's cool. And then he would never touch it. It's, it's still a weird thing to give them. And apparently, Casey has a really bad locker. This is the first time we're told this, I believe. Um, and it's right next to the boys' bathroom. Um, but And then Emily's like, oh, you have to get a new lot. Like, she's telling Casey that she has to get a lot of things. <laughs> she's like, you have to get a new locker. But wasn't she sharing one with Emily? Yeah! I don't remember her getting a new locker. There's no room for it. How did she do this? So apparently, from the beginning of the time she started school, where she was sharing with Emily... She started, she got a new locker. Somehow. Whatever. Um, but also, these boys that are going in and out of this place are seriously gross. That I would not blame Casey for not wanting to be there any longer. Because, like, one didn't flush. And, like, mm-hmm. apparently she can, like, smell it. And then the one that handed her the fruit basket, like, he had gone into the bathroom after he gave it to her, and then he came back out, like, pretty quickly afterwards. And she's like, did you wash your hands? And then he just, like, scurried away really quickly, meaning he did it, and like, ew. Maybe Casey is just, like, a super hearing and shit, so she's like, did you flush? I can hear that you didn't flush. I didn't hear the water go. You should probably go wash your hands. But still, it was seriously disgusting. And then Casey says, like, during lunch, she's going to ask for a new one. Uh, We go to lunchtime, and Casey is at the office asking for a new locker. The lady behind the desk is saying that there are none, because all these Russian foreign exchange students have taken them all. (laughs) You know what makes me laugh about it? Is how it's all these Russian exchange students 
and Derek's like, form the mob. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the whole thing. That's like, I think that's what it is. Well, anyway, now we're back in the hallway, and Casey is telling Emily how all the Russian exchange students are occupying the free lockers. And Emily looks so confused. And then she was like, oh, you mean, like, that kid over there? And she points to a kid getting something out of the locker nearby, and it ends up being Edwin. He's at school. And so Casey confronts Edwin and asking him, like, why he's there, because he's at the high school when he's supposed to be at, like, his little kid's school. This little kid's school. Because everyone calls, like, the middle thing different. Like, I call it middle school. Some people call it junior high. Some of their secondary. I don't know. See, I didn't have that. Mine was just elementary school and high school. Because my school was just one big school from pre-K to 12. So it was like the second you got to eighth grade, that was high school. Mine was really weird. Um, It's changed now. Like, since I've left there, they've changed the grades and which ones at school but my elementary school went from kindergarten to third grade and then middle school was fourth grade to eighth grade and then i had high school ninth to twelfth but now but now it's kindergarten to fifth for elementary school like they completely remodeled my old elementary school and made more room for it and now the middle school is just like a strictly six to eight, which I think is a lot uh, what a lot of schools are like. Either it's six to eight or seven to eight in like one school. Well, I didn't like how we had our middle school because you're a fourth grader and you're, like, you're just still this like little youthful kid. And then you're with these like really emo teenagers, like they're just turning into teenagers and getting ready to go to high school. And it's just, like, there's such a big difference there. (laughs) Could you imagine, like, a kid at your school being like, yeah, I'm in middle school, and then some kid from some other school is like, bitch, you grade four. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably what happened a lot. (laughs) It's just too funny. But anyway, so she asked him, like, why he's there. Edwin's like, um, oh, my girlfriend goes here. He's so creepy, that kid. Again! He's just like... Okay, Edwin. He's like 10, right? So Something like that. Even if he, if she was just a freshman, that's like 13, 14. No. <laughs> no, okay? No. Just, uh, no, okay? Eventually, uh, Edwin says that Derek wanted books from his locker. So he was getting Derek's stuff. But Casey points out that that is not Derek's locker. And he's just like, oh, oh, well. (laughs) Like, that doesn't tip you off or anything either. So this only makes Casey more curious about what Derek's doing. And so then Casey is at Paul's office. And she had called Paul in for an emergency meeting. Like, she's already in Paul's office. And Paul comes rushing in. Poor Paul. (laughs) And he's like, what's the problem? And she starts ranting about someone going down the wrong path, but she doesn't know all the facts, that maybe she's just jumping to conclusions. And she that's basically all she said. Like, she's, like, it's barely a minute that she's there. And she, again, like, kind of, like, talks herself into doing something without Paul's feedback. And then she just gets up and leave after all of that. She's a fool. Like, we know this. She's so dramatic. Like, first thing she goes to, oh, my God, he is a drug dealer. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god what am i gonna do and obviously her plan is i'm gonna join him <laughs> <laughs> so casey goes back home and she confronts Derek. and at the time Derek is on the phone and i love the one line he says in this and he's like i'm losing money like a bingo granny <laughs> iconic uh-huh um we should make t-shirts <laughs> yeah like i'd wear that to work <laughs> Um, so Casey says she knows what he's been doing. And then she, like, asks him if he's afraid of going to jail. Which, I mean, he kind of could, like, probably get fined. I mean, he's still pretty young. But he's still, like, doing things under the table. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. He's but doing, like, a time. secret business, and he's not playing. He's not playing. He's not paying taxes. That is true. That is true. I didn't think about that. Uh, Tax evasion. But, but like, yeah. But, like, I know for, uh, 
like, if it was drugs and stuff, depending on the charge, he could be tried as an adult. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So he could be going to jail! Which is why she's freaked out. She was like, don't you care about going to jail? And then he laughs it off, saying he's just going to go to the principal's office, which is fine because he has his own chair in there. And, like, of course he has his own chair in there. (laughs) He's probably in there, like, once a day. Casey is like, you know, I have to do what's right. Like, I have to, like, tell George or whatever. So she goes to tell George. And then Derek realizes at that point what Casey thinks he's doing. Which is selling drugs. (laughs) And, um, And he runs after her. And just as she's about to tell George... Derek shows up in the kitchen and George starts going crazy because he's like, I can't get the chicken box. Get him out of here. Derek, leave. Derek says he'll only leave if he can take Casey with him. And I kind of love how he's holding her here. Like he has, he's wearing the hockey gloves. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> and then he has his like arm like around hers or whatever. Then George tells Casey to just go with him. And like George has his like mouth covered and everything and like... George is dramatic, too. <laughs> oh, they're meant to be daughter and father. Yes. but And so Derek drags Casey all the way back to his room. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this could have been taken out of context, just saying. But He asks her what she thinks he's doing. She tells him that she thinks he's selling drugs to kids at school. <laughs> and then he's like, how stupid do you think I am? And he's like, don't answer that one. <laughs> Yeah, but here, that whole sequence, though, of them talking about it, Mm -hmm. it literally made me think that whole time, I'm like, what if they did go into the criminal enterprises together? I was like, of course you would think that. Shut up! (laughs) (laughs) I have a mind of my own, okay? It goes places. (laughs) One, I don't think Casey would be down for selling drugs. Listen. Listen, this is an alternate universe. <laughs> okay, okay. It's really it's like, alternate. Okay, you know that's not as alternate as we've gone. You know how far <laughs> we've gone with it. You know that I one know. story. I feel like a lot of our alternate universes have still been in character. I mean, except for that one. <laughs> Holy hell. Which we, one? I can't say it if you can't remember. I can't. It was wild. I'll bring it up on my TED Talk. <laughs> Wait, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I'll bring it up in my TED Talk. Yeah, but when's your TED Talk going to be? In 10 years? I mean, yeah, I need to gather more (laughs) evidence. Fine. So, she's adamant about telling George if he doesn't tell her, like, what he's doing at school if he's not selling drugs. So, Derek tells her he's selling in-school merchandise. He's selling the Derek brand. (laughs) Okay, and it comprises of, like, three things. Is is what he's saying like old clothes? He's he's selling old clothes, something like that to like the fashion hopeless or something. Yeah, but like, are they their old clothes? I have no idea. Like, I forget. I I couldn't I couldn't figure out like where he was getting the clothes from. But there's somebody's old clothes that he's giving to like people who, I guess, just don't have any fashion sense whatsoever. I I have no idea. So then. Another thing is that he's selling used office supplies. The good stuff. And a thing that's been happening in this episode is that they're like, where are all our pens? Why can't I ever have one when I need one? Because Derek's taking all their supplies and selling them at school. This is a struggle, though, because every day at work, we have so many pens. And then when we need one, we're like, where are they? Derek's like, coming in, stealing them? your shit, and then selling <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. It is a struggle at my work. <laughs> so then, and then the last thing is something called detunes. That's the stupidest <laughs> And That's the worst thing. They're songs Derek likes performed by some guy who plays guitar. Okay? I hate it. I hate it. Which is just the stupidest thing in my mind because if I like a song, it's because it's being sung by a certain person. Okay, I do not want the karaoke version. But it's their top seller somehow, and I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand either. But he's, he says that um, he's turned the guy who does it, like the guitar, he turns the guy into a hit in like one semester. But then he's getting 100% of the profit. 
Like, seriously, Derek? Like, <laughs> a dumb guy. I mean, I'm not surprised, but really? You can't even give the guy, like, 10%, 5%, like, something? I just hate it. He's, he's dumb at the... Ugh. And so he tells Casey, but this week, there has been no way to move the merchandise since his, you know, guy Frank is away in Florida. So he says he needs someone to give people their orders. And then he looks at Casey, you know, hinting that he wants her to help. And she doesn't want to at first. And he's like, I'm a sick man in need. How can you turn away from a sick man in need? And then she turns away. <laughs> yeah, she's like, well, like this. And, she, and I'm like, once again, she's savage. I know, this episode especially. It's like, damn, Casey. Um, So he tells her that he'll get her a new locker. Because... Derek is all-knowing in that school, apparently. And he knows that she needs a new locker. And all the lockers for the foreign exchange students are just Derek using them for his for his business. Do you know what's hilarious, though? This is making me think. I remember in my high school, we had something like that. Like what? You, like what Derek was doing. Oh, seriously? <laughs> but it wasn't, like, merchandise. Kids went out to, like, we had this, like, wholesale, like, grocery store by our school. So they went out and bought, like, candy and pop and everything, and they had an empty locker that they stored everything in. <laughs> God. And people would go, and they're like, oh, you want that? That's a dollar. And we're like, okay. Instead of having to go out and, like, pay for it, they oh my God. get it. And so, like, every day they'd go out with, like, their shopping cart to, like, this wholesaler place. And it was so funny because the principal knew about it. But did like, nothing. Oh, he did nothing because he thought it was the most amazing thing. He <laughs> thought it was like the school started its own like society and like this was their black market thing. So he was fascinated by it. <laughs> he just watched it. From oh a my god! So like, uh, I yeah, mean, it was great. it was good for those people because they didn't get in trouble. But still, wow. Yeah, no, it was just ridiculous, and I just love it. I just remind me. <laughs> I was like, I remember this happening. See, maybe Derek was in the wrong business. Maybe if it was a candy business, he would have been yeah. fine. Yeah, but no, it's stolen office supplies. <laughs> so he tells her she'll get in a new locker. And then, when she's still reluctant, he tells her that she could get a cell phone from helping him. Which... We hear that she needed a cell phone at the beginning of the episode because Emily said she needed one. So she caved, but promises it's only for a couple of days. So it cuts to Casey at school, opening up a locker with all these supplies in it. And kids just start lining up, and she looks like she's enjoying this a little too much. This is why I think she and Derek are going to start an actual like drug business. <laughs> she was high I... on the high of being breaking <laughs> the rules. I mean... I think she liked doing something like this, but I don't think she would do it with drugs. You don't know? I don't think so. In an alternate universe, anything is possible. Okay, but in the context of this, no. <laughs> All right, people, you know what to do. You write that story for me. <laughs> Woo! She's wearing a beep the beeper, and it rings, and she has to call Derek on the payphone nearby. Like, wow. I, I think... I've seen one payphone in the last, like, ten years. Oh, yeah. No! I'm trying to think. I, f mm, I feel like they're m more of a thing, like, in big cities. Even then, I haven't seen any. Because I used to be in the city all the time, and I don't remember seeing any. There was one where I lived. It's no longer there now, but uh, I just find it so funny the way she holds it. She's like, it is contaminated. Yeah, she's holding it with, like, her sleeve, and she's just like... But then she tells Derek that sales are booming, except his biggest moneymaker, D-Tunes. And Derek says people have been canceling orders and that he needs Casey to do some snooping. And she's like, I'm a businesswoman, not a snoop. And Derek reminds her of her benefits package for him, uh, for her as a, his employee, uh, which is like, you know, the locker, the cell phone. So Derek ends up having competition in the CD market. That's why he's losing his sales. And it's from Frank. Dun, dun, dun. His business partner. Yes. And even where Frank is working with Johnny Stein, who's the dude that doing the recordings for Derek, the guitar, Derek's been betrayed. 
None other than a boy on Degrassi. <laughs> We're not there yet. You know what? I'm making it there. <laughs> Casey, again, she is like made for this job. If she did, if she wasn't a lawyer or a doctor, I think she'd be a very good realtor. She like is able to get people to buy things that they don't want to buy. Or like, you know, I would say she'd be a good like um drug dealer, I agree. <sighs> no. <laughs> she gets this guy to buy five CDs and he's going to talk to the chess club to get them more. That's how good she is. And she gets caught though by the lady from the office. And the one who denied her? Yes, the one that denied her. How dare she? And she tells Casey that she can even sit in Derek's chair. Ooh! <laughs> an honor! So, we go back to the house. George is then revealed to have the chicken pox. He has a sore in his cheek. But he insists it's a flea bite. And he's all, we have fleas. And then Nora, she's with him. He's like, no, George, you can't deny it. And he's like, yes, I can! And you can't stop me! Stupid fleas! <laughs> I believe it. He's convinced. I mean, if you lie to yourself enough, you'll believe yourself. <laughs> just the way he acts, though. It's just, like, again, over dramatic, but it's just, like, I love it. I love George. I believe it. And then Casey comes into Derek's room, freaking out because she was in the principal's office and that she should have never gotten involved. And Derek's just like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, just <clears throat> whatever. So she leaves not long after talking to Derek, and Derek's on the phone talking with Frank. And he's like, oh, Frank, how was the wedding? Did you catch the bouquet? <laughs> That's what happens. And then he admits that he knows what Frank has been really doing. And he tells Frank that he's going to come over. Now, I don't know why Frank comes over, because he didn't really have to. <laughs> he's scared of him. I know, but, like, why would you go to his house? Like, I would almost wait until, like, I got cornered at school rather than go to his house. That's true. But Frank comes over. There's big Godfather vibes. And it's Ryan Cooley who plays Frank. And he, if you don't know who Ryan Cooley is, he played JT on Degrassi. De cray cray. And now I miss JT. <laughs> I mean... I didn't watch it when he was on the show, so... <laughs> you didn't watch the early years? No. Those are the good years! I just didn't do it. How the hell dare you? I know, I just know things. I just know JT dies, and then that girl who he was dating, like, drags around his corpse everywhere. What?! No! <laughs> that is not what happened! <laughs> It is in the version I saw. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> oh my god. Is that the Shane Dawson thing? <laughs> yes. Damn, that is old. I'm trying to figure out, like, what the hell are you talking about? But then I do remember that coming out, like, ten years ago. Oh my the god. Video, those two videos are my favorite. <laughs> like, absolutely my favorite. Oh my gosh. I remember them. Yeah, I do. Because that was like during the height of when I was watching Degrassi, basically. And then he came up with those videos and it's just like, oh my god. Uh, it was just so funny. Just like... <laughs> I'm trying to figure <laughs> out like where the hell you were yeah. getting that from. She's dragging around his dead corpse. I'm like, what? <laughs> we call her the Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, spoilers if you haven't watched Degrassi. <laughs> It's wild. But anyway, so JT, it was on Degrassi. And I think this might have been around the same time that happened on the show. Um, maybe like a year before he died. I don't know. But because like, his hair looks the same. So Derek is talking to Frank and he has his back to Frank. Like he's in his chair and his, at his desk and he's talking to Frank and his back's to him. And he's talking about how he couldn't believe he was so disloyal and how Frank was, you know, had to make it up to Derek. And it's all very godfatherish. Derek tells Frank, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. And he turns around and Frank's all like, you're hideous. <laughs> now, would you really say that to someone you're like so like petrified of? 
<laughs> You're hideous. I mean, I don't know. But it's just, like, so bad that, like, he thinks that chicken pox are that bad. Yeah, it really wasn't that bad. No. Um, especially Derek's. Like, it really... <laughs> it was so fake. I know. Like, the next day, apparently, Casey comes into Derek's room, and apparently Frank confessed to being the one selling the merchandise, and that Casey has no part in it. And she got a new locker. Okay, so one, how did they convince Casey she had nothing to do with it when she was by the locker selling things out of it? It's because the secretary lady was on drugs and <laughs> saw shit. She was sampling the goods. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's like in the um, mechanical pencils. Like, instead of having the actual lead, it's like some type of drug that they just like... <laughs> it, it, what if it is? What if it's all a cover? <laughs> They're like, yeah, this is just my pen, and it's actually a needle inside, and they inject the. Oh sun my to god! The Why do we come up with this? <laughs> We're creating a whole new world. <laughs> um, and then the CD is just supposed to help with like, um, like if they're in hallucinogen, if they're using hallucinogens. Like, it's supposed to warp out their mind a little bit. I believe it, because uh, one of my friends, he got, like, these sound files that actually, like, did that. Mm -hmm. So, like, you would listen to it and, like, just, like, close your eyes and listen to it, and it actually made you feel stuff. Like, it was, like, we were tripping balls at school from this, like, CD, these audio files. That's why they're two of his best things, like... Drugs and then CDs that make you trip balls. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> but Casey never knew this, and then she finds out, like, years later that they were actually selling drugs. I believe it. <laughs> she tells Derek that, and Derek says that he told Frank in his best interest to take the fall. And also, he gave Frank the exclusive rights to Johnny, the guy who does the guitar, despite being Derek's cash cow. Casey tells Derek, I'm impressed, which is paralleling to the moment where Derek said that to her in the party. Parallels. Parallel. <laughs> and then Casey still wants to help Derek's business, but he fires her. <laughs> of course. He's getting too deep into the drug game. He's like, you gotta get out. Like, she's doing too well, I think, and he's just like, I can't have her being better than me. That's true. Um, but he fires her, and he's like, business is cool, but not totally heartless. And he gives Casey a cell phone. And it's I just, so ugly. I, well, yes. I mean, come on. It's like 2005, 2006. <laughs> um, but I do True. love this scene because he was not obligated at all to get her off the hook at the principal's office. He was not obligated to give her a new locker. He was not obligated expecting especially to get her a new phone like the new phone was basically supposed to be a perk she could get with all the money that he'd be giving her but we he never just saw went that and got the phone her. himself yeah like we never saw her get any of the money that's the funny thing yeah well that's true too <laughs> But I, I just I just love that scene and then he kind of like just like tried to shoo her away afterwards and yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it ends. Yeah, I think it is. So, yeah. That was the Pox Father. I do like that episode. I just think it's so funny because, like, I remember watching it the first time. Like, oh my god, is he, like, doing drugs? Yeah, you know, <laughs> know it. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's just funny to see Casey freak out. But I think this is, like, for a kid's show, like, to even bring up drugs is wild. This is definitely one of their, like, more, I think, sensitive episodes in a way. Not that I find it sensitive, but I, I could see other people being like, I'm not going to let my child watch this. All right, so one of the questions we had is that if Derek and Casey switched bodies, how do you think they would react to it? Mm -hmm. I have an answer to this. Yes, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know. Obviously, everyone has seen Scooby-Doo, like the live-action Scooby-Doo. And if you haven't, you, you should. It's really good. Do you remember when, like, their souls, their ectoplasm souls or whatever, got, like, separated from their bodies and then they were flying around and they could go into the wrong body? Yeah. Yeah, so, 
you know when Fred Fred's ectoplasm like goes into Daphne's body <laughs> <laughs> and then it, the opposite happened and then they're like he's like hey I can look at myself naked <laughs> like, that's I feel like that would a hundred percent happen. Oh my god, Derek would so be like that. Yeah, and then she'd be like, "Get your hands off me!" <laughs> um, what else? And then it kind of reminds me of the like movie. It's a boy girl thing where it's like two neighbors who like the guy's like a super jock, popular jock for football, and the other girl's like super smart and a loner, and they ended up switching bodies. That's what I felt would have happened as well. And it's a really funny movie. It's like... I remember watching it, and I remember liking it, but I can't remember, like, specifics about it. I just remember that, like, he tries to get back at her at something because she inadvertently gets his girlfriend to dump her. Well, him, while she's in his body. Yeah. So he's like, I'll get you back. So he, like, dresses her up all trashy and stuff. <laughs> And makes it look like she's gonna go like. I could see that dude. happening with them. Like they would get each other. Like, oh my god, Casey would do ballet in Derek's body. Oh my god, probably he probably she'd probably like pull a muscle though. <laughs> <laughs> but like seriously, like you know, Derek loved being the center of attention. So she like go into the like cafeteria, like yo everybody, and then she start doing like ballet and like dancing yeah. and all this stuff, and I then. They, Derek would probably just like try to make Casey the dirtiest, filthiest like <laughs> like she just kind of like eating like just like make her like the grossest person ever while he's in her body like basically That's being literally, him literally what happens in the movie like yeah <laughs> she's, just, like, she's just like stuffing her face and everything <laughs> everyone's like ugh it's so funny Remember last um, podcast we asked people if what they thought like would be appropriate like um, movie or TV show that they could see Daisy in? Yeah. Well, someone said I could totally see Daisy being on Baywatch together. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Mostly because I'd love to see them being lifeguards, saving lives, or so I could see Derek and Casey giving each other mouth to mouth. I'm in so much pain right now. And then now. someone's like, also because I'd love to see Mike slash Derek shirtless, in case you didn't know, I'm a big fan of Michael Cedar. <laughs> did you write this? Huh? No, I did not did write, write this. this. <laughs> it would not surprise me. I mean, if you did. Mike has been working out. He does have a nice physique. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I did not write this. I need proof. It's anonymous, so I can't. <laughs> there's no proof! But I didn't write it. I didn't write it. Also, I think uh, uh, seeing Daisy as firefighters saving lives together. Well, so what? Like Chicago Fire? <laughs> I guess. I, I've never watched the show. I love Chicago Fire. It's a good show. Mm, but I've never watched it. So yeah, that was someone's um, thing on that. Baywatch would like be it. funny like as it. hell because I could see like them doing the slow mo. I can't take this seriously. <laughs> I'm cracking up at the image though. I cannot. Alright, next episode, and it's the last one of season one. Oh my god, we did a season! We did a season! Yeah! We're about to do- well, well, let's not do it yet because we haven't recorded it yet. <laughs> it's like after yeah! it's like after this one, we don't ever talk again. <laughs> Yeah. But the next so, one but- is male code blue. Oh god. Okay. So that's the next mm-hmm. one we're doing. That's definitely a Daisy episode and such a good one to end the season on. So mm-hmm. that's g- going to be what we're talking about next. If you have any mm-hmm. questions for that one in particular, let us know on uh, Tumblr. We're daisy.tumblr.com. On Twitter, we are twitter.com slash oopsie daisy pod and then obviously in our youtube comments you can definitely leave some there okay or anchor or mess let us have voice messages on anchor (laughs) yes you know you want to all right i think that's 
that's good for now. This is the end. Thank you for writing in. Mm-hmm. So, until next time, bye. Goodbye forever. <laughs>